Hi, my name is Jim Wagner and welcome to Doorman Defensive Tactics. This is about keeping you, the doorman, safe in your profession. Back in the old days, doormans had, for the most part, a bad reputation. They were big thugs who, if there was a problem in a club or a bar, they would just go in, fight, uh, or sometimes rudely throw someone out. And of course, those things do happen where there's a hostile people in an environment. But nowadays, the profession has become more professional and the club owners do not want liability. They want a system that's in place where their doorman will not cause them a legal lawsuit. Now this video is going to not only teach you some of the physical tactics you need in this job, because let's face it, this job is very dangerous. Uh, people could do a physical fight with you, they could uh, come against you with a knife or a gun, and of course this could be very deadly, and occasionally doormen do get killed. That's why it's important to learn not only how to use physical techniques to um, handle those uh, extreme situations, but the best thing a doorman can do is not get into a fight at all. Your goal is to de-escalate situations. You want things to calm down right away. And that means you have to have command presence. You have to be in control. And you have to let other people know you're in control. And yet, not start hostilities. You have to do it in a way that's very smart. Now, one of the problems with many doorman um, schools out there or courses that are out there is they don't learn the proper use of force. In this job, you have to know what's, uh, what's appropriate for different situations. You cannot treat all situations the same because not all situations are the same. You have to know what's called the use of force continuum. The use of force continuum is used by police departments, security agencies, and even the military for peacekeeping operations. And in this video, this DVD, we're going to teach you about the proper uses of force and how to apply to various situations. Now, you're probably wondering, well, how am I, Jim Wagner, a military and police defensive tactics instructor, able to teach the subject of door defensive tactics? Well. Even though I'm a, a police officer, currently a sergeant, and I've had years of military and police training, um, I am occasionally asked by different countries to do different type of uh, duties. For example, one of those duties is working as a doorman. Now, my clients are usually high up uh, Hollywood elite types. In fact, I just got done a month ago doing uh, door work. I was in charge of a door for the Golden Globes Award in Hollywood. And some of the people I had to make sure were protected was Matthew Perry, uh, Shirley MacLaine, some of the supermodels that you see on the magazines. And of course, uh, even though it's high end, there's people who are trying to crash the party, people who are drunk, people who do cause problems. And I had my fair share of problems too. And so I do know what it's like working on the door. Not only that, because I teach reality-based personal protection, I also have many doormen coming to me to the reality-based personal protection system in order to learn to be better in their jobs. And there are certain elements that regardless of whether you're a police officer, a military special forces operator, or a doorman, there's certain things that are going to be common in all of these professions. And yet a doorman, you're also worried about public relations and you don't want to get your supervisor or your owner of the club or uh, whatever event you happen to be a doorman at, you don't want to get them into trouble. You want to be as professional as you can. And you'll also be confronting the police if you ever get into a situation that's very serious. Because if there is a serious situation, the police will arrive. And you want to be able to communicate with them. You want to be professional to them. Or you could end up getting arrested yourself. Or you could end up getting sued or going to court because you did something stupid. This DVD is to help you in your job. So we're going to go to the first technique and the first lesson. What we're going to talk about first is your presentation, how you look at the door or your position. You have to look professional and for this example, I have the director of the reality-based system for Netherlands, my partner, Mike Constantinidis. Mike, why don't you say a few words about your background? Hi, my name is Mike Constantinidis. Um, I'm resident in the Netherlands at the moment. 
Uh, previously, I lived in the UK for um, 16 years. I worked as a doorman for 10 years in London, West End. And um, I got a lot of experience working the door. I've seen so many things happen. And um, now, these days, things have changed for, for in my days was fist to fist made the best win. Now these days there's knife, guns involved, all kind of things. That's where Jim now's expertise is gonna come and fill in the place. So um, my last job was I worked for four years at the United Nation at the Walk Around Tribunal in The Hague and uh, it was a great experience and um, now I'm honored and pleased to uh, be the uh, director of uh, Reality Base Holland and um, I hope you enjoy this DVD. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to go through how you should look in front of a door position. And we'll use Mike as our example here. The first thing you want to do is you want to look professional. And the way you're going to do that is with a good haircut. Now, obviously, it's going to depend exactly what kind of establishment you're working for. Some are more restrictive than others. But we're talking about right now just a very good club that's well respected. And you're going to have a good haircut. You also want to be clean shaven. You don't want a Fu Manchu mustache. You don't want to look like some Hell's Angel biker. You want to look professional. And a good uh, clean shave is good. No earrings, no nose rings, uh, no tattoos that show. You want to have all that covered up. The next thing is you want a good suit. Uh, now, not every place requires a good suit, but if it does, you want it to be in good, condi con good condition. You don't want it to have any tears. You don't want it to be stained. Now, for some uh, places, they require you to wear some sort of badge. And in this case, this is a, a typical badge worn in the Netherlands for security or doorman. Um, uh, many times when I'm working protective details, uh, I, I just did, like I said, the Golden Globes Award, and we wore a small badge as well. And this is worn in the United States or other places. Uh, when I was protecting Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie, we didn't need badges. Um, it just wasn't that kind of a, an assignment. Um, the next thing is you want a good pair of shoes. You want them shined. You want them to look good. You don't want them to be worn out. Uh, again, you want to have everything looking new. It doesn't have to be new, but it needs to look new. Uh, because if your employer sees that it's an old pair, it doesn't make a good impression. And, and you want to keep this job, so you want to always be uh, presentable. You don't want any flashy rings, you don't want any jewelry, uh, and you want to keep the hands clean as possible. You want to keep the fingernails nice and uh, cut. Uh, you don't want to have long fingernails or dirty fingernails. I mean, you're, again, you're not a mechanic, you're a, a doorman, you're representing that club. And again, when you stand up and when you're holding your position, you don't want to be leaning up against the wall. You don't want to be slouching. You don't want to be looking up into the air. You want to stand straight. You want to look like you're in charge. And that's what we call command presence. You want to look like you're in command. Uh, and right off the bat, if, uh, if, if people coming to the club see that you're professional, see that you're very concerned about this position, and you show uh, authority, that could uh, alleviate a lot of problems right away. And so this is a good way of how you should dress in a professional environment. Now we're going to look at a different type of uniform and I'm going to use Martin. Martin is a student with Mike Constantinidis in the Netherlands in our reality-based facility. Now this is a typical dress you might see you know, for a more relaxed atmosphere. This could be a, a different type of bar um, or club. And of course, you know, he has his shirt tucked in. You don't want the shirt untucked. Uh, again, grooming standards might be a little looser. It just, again, it de depends on your employer. Now we're gonna talk about weapons. Should doormen carry weapons? Well, whether you're in the United States, Canada, Germany, France, the Netherlands, a lot of times the answer is no. You're not allowed to carry any weapons. They don't want you to carry weapons. Now there are some situations, and I have in some situations been posted where I did have firearms or maybe only knives were allowed. It just depends on the laws and it depends on the, on the place that hired you. Now he has a weapon that's very legal in many places called a Kuboton. And this Kuboton is it's, uh, on the end of a keychain and it's, uh, you know, for the most part, it's a very low level weapon. 
but it can be used for come along techniques. It can be used to hit, and it's usually made out of a composite plastic, or in this case, a, uh, a steel. And so, again, this is the appearance you want for uh, many doors. And again, command presence, look like you're in charge, and a lot of people will listen to you if you, if you have some sort of command presence or authority. All right, now many of you are gonna be teaching this course, if you are instructors, teaching doorman defensive tactics in a martial arts school or some sort of training facility. And of course, not every facility is, you, you don't have access to everything because some people are on a budget, let's face it. But you don't need to have millions of dollars or hundreds of thousands of euros to create realistic scenarios. All I have here are common packing boxes and I have a box up top and we're creating a door. And this is good because if someone gets hit against it, it's gonna collapse and nobody's gonna get hurt. So you don't need anything expensive, just some cardboard boxes and that will be fine. And I do this in my own school in Los Angeles. Now, I'm gonna bring Mike out again and he's gonna stand in a position that a doorman should be at. Now, the reason he's not going to stand in the middle of the doorway is because, well, he doesn't want to block people who want to exit the door. I mean, there are going to be people leaving the club, so you don't want to constantly be moving. Now, he doesn't want to move too far away from the door or people are just going to take advantage of him. Now, for example, you want to stay as close to the door jam or the frame as possible because if you don't, bad things could happen. For example, he could be distracted. Maybe someone's coming up to him and if he leaves this position, all of a sudden another guy walks behind him and it's over. Somebody could walk in and now we don't know who's in there. It could be a troublemaker and he could cause problems. Helping me on that scenario was JJ, Ali, and Mike. And they're going to help me out with some more of these scenarios. Now we're going to talk about the right way to do something like this. And of course, not leaving your position. Because leaving your position or getting distracted, uh, again, you can see the problems that can arise from that. Now, not all the time are you going to have several doormen. Or you might not even have a couple doormen. You might be working alone. You might work alone because maybe it's a, a, a budget situation where he can't afford too many people. Or maybe your partner was working with you, but he had to go take care of a problem or he had to go to the bathroom for a few minutes. So we're going to let Mike handle this situation. It's not a glamorous situation, but it's something a doorman runs into all the time. You're not always going to be in the, the fight or the gun scenario. I mean, this is what, what uh, dealing with uh, hostile people can be like on a low level. So we're going to try the distraction again. And we have a person distracting Mike. Good evening, sir. And now somebody one. trying to sneak in. Uh, we'll just hold on. Good evening, sir. On this way, please, just hold on. I'm just dealing with this gentleman. I'm with you one more, sir. Now, just government take it. Can you go get the manager somewhere? Okay, I'm supposed to go. I cannot leave the door alone. Sorry. And stop. So, as you can see, Mike was professional. He dealt with the one subject, and he was talking with him. But the moment someone tried to come in, then he starts guarding his territory. We like to call this guarding the box because this box is his territory, and he can deal with both of them. And if he has to physically block this door, he will. The next thing we're going to talk about is what kind of position or what kind of stance should you be in during the door situation. Uh, we're not talking about a full-on fight, but we are talking what we call the alert stance. Now we're going to start off with the scenario and then we're going to explain it afterwards. So we're going to let Mike handle this. Good evening, sir. Good evening. How are you this evening? Hello. Good are you evening. a member of the club, sir? Yes, sir. Okay, okay great. Thank you very much. Okay. Have a nice evening. Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye. Evening, sir. Hello, good How evening. Hey, I'm fine. You well? Uh, I'm invited by uh, Frank. Uh, I'm sorry, I need a membership card, sir. Uh, I it's know, members only. Maybe he's in. I can. I'm, I'm sorry, sir. I'll just, ask just him. hold on one second. It's members only, sir. I just want, I just there. Want, one moment, please. Just let me explain to you. It's a procedure. And I stop. One second, please, sir. Okay, good. Now we're going to talk about the right way to handle this, which Mike did, but we're going to we're going to dissect this a little bit. Now, when the first subject came up to Mike. 
Uh, Mike was very professional, asked for his uh, membership ID, and once he saw that it was okay, he let him in. However, when Ronald came up on the second subject, uh, all of a sudden he's, he doesn't have the right membership, he's getting a little agitated, and what uh, Mike did was got into what we call an alert stance. He put back his primary leg, which in this case he's right-handed, so he can use his right fist or his right leg to kick. So he slightly puts it back, he starts talking with his hands, and that's in case if this guy suddenly swings, his hands are up there. And he doesn't look threatening, he's looking very natural, but he in his own mind is preparing for the conflict, and that's what you have to do. Even though everything might not seem very dangerous, you have to prepare for conflict the moment you have indicators that something's gonna happen. And we'll talk about uh, reading people or understanding hostile people in a minute. Next thing we're gonna talk about is threat zones. What are threat zones? Well, threat zones are the areas you're gonna to have to deal with different subjects. So let's just start off with uh, an example here. We have JJ coming into the picture. Evening, sir. How are you? Well, um, I'm a regular here, but I've forgotten about that. Okay. Oh, no problem, isn't it? Unfortunately, the club has a policy, sir. Yeah, but I'm a regular. I'm here every week. Go get Frank. One more. Get Frank. Okay, One good. Moment. Now, thank you, JJ. Now, we have different levels of threats. Now, if you look at uh, any of the DVDs I did on defensive tactics, you know that there's three levels. We have the yellow zone. The yellow zone is for like some stranger coming up to you on the street uh, or someone approaching you you don't know. And we try to keep them well in the, in the furthest distance we can. The next zone is what we call the orange zone. And that's the professional distance that he's gonna operate in. So when he's asking for membership, it's within reaching distance, right? Because if someone has a card, they're going to hand him a card and he's going to take it. That's the orange zone. The red zone is when someone gets right into your face. Now he's going to do everything he can to prevent someone from getting into the red zone. Now the problem with a, a club or an establishment is you can't keep people at yellow zone because people are coming up real tight on this door. So what you have to do is at least keep them out of your red zone. So now someone who comes into his red zone, if he has to even slightly push him back, he's gonna have to because he cannot let someone come through this door and he doesn't want someone to get into the box. So let's see how that happens. Good evening, sir. One moment, one moment, please. One moment. Hold on, one moment. One moment. Okay. Stay back. Okay, okay. now stop. Thank you, Ali. Now, you notice the way Mike handled this. He didn't push him like he's starting a fight. You don't want to get these people more agitated than they already are. So he just grabbed his arms, like I'm, he's going to grab my arms, and now he's controlling me. Yes, he's pushing me away, but it's more polite. Now, if I start struggling, now he has control of my arms. Now, obviously, we still have to worry about legs and stuff, but you know, if, if it turns into a full fight, he's going to handle it. But that's the way you deal with people, is you just grab a hold of them, and if they get in your red zone, they have no business being there, and he will get them away from them. And I've had to do that myself many times to people. It's perfectly okay. But you gotta remember, the moment you lay hands on someone, you better be ready for a fight, because sometimes that makes people very angry. Now, in the profession of doorman, there's a lot of little tricks that doormen use to help reduce situations. Now Mike's going to show a typical situation where instead of getting into a fight or pushing right away, he's going to actually do a distraction technique that's going to kind of confuse the subject and of course slow things down a little bit. So let's see how it works. Good evening sir. Is Hi. this your car sir? Somebody's asking if that's your car there. Is that your car there? No, it's not my car. Did you park in the other line? No. Are you sure? No, I'm sure. Okay, can I help you sir? Uh, okay, now yeah. good. Thank you Ali. So as you can see, if he sees that there might be trouble, he can suddenly ask a question and make this guy confused for a second and at least slow things down and, and not cause a problem right away. And again, Mike was very professional about it and you gotta talk professional with these people because if they feel they're being disrespected, that's when the fight starts. 